I don't know about you, but I really like snow. It changes everything. Suddenly the light comes from beneath and uh, all the sounds are dampened. And speaking of change, I watched a video by a Danish portrait photographer, Petra Kleis. I'll post the link in the description below so you can see her work if you're curious. And she said something that it really flipped the switch in my head. She said, the picture says as much about the photographer as it does about the subject. And I know you're thinking, yeah, yeah, perfect. That's, that's not fantastic. I mean, that's, of course it's like that. But maybe I've had a little bit this thinking that as a photographer, I could hide, but your footprint as a photographer is all over the place because you choose the timing, you choose the framing, you choose so many things. And of course I knew that, but when you, when you sort of think that to an end, you start to, to ask yourself, why did I actually shoot the image that I did? I could start to see a reason why I had shot these particular pictures, even though I wasn't aware of it at the point in time when I shot them. So these themes, I mean, I, I've noticed several themes, and I think if you look at your own work, you will probably find the same, that there are themes. Um, I just want to discuss one today, and that's feeling small, or feeling a little bit out of place, feeling a little bit, yeah, like the underdog. And I'm sorry to bother you with that silly tree again. I'm sure that some of you are fed up with that tree. But I just want to show you here. I think it reminds me of being, you know, the new kid in the schoolyard, the small kid, out of place. And uh, it could also just be a photographer, a new photographer, and Saul Leiter standing over there, and Ansel Adams standing over there. So you feel small when you compare yourself to the big ones. And I think that is why this scene talks to me. It's nothing to do with the light or the colors as such. It is simply about the mood. In his book, The Inner Game of Outdoor Photography, uh, Galen talks about the first image that was ever taken of the planet seen from the outside in. I think it was uh, when we landed on the moon. I think also there was a time when we started to feel small. We understood how small our planet is in the big universe, or we at least got some visuals to that. So I think actually many images are about feeling small and humble. The inner game of outdoor photography. Thank you for recommending that. I uh, really like the book. I am roughly 100 pages into the book and he certainly knows what he's talking about. And man, has that guy traveled a lot. That's impressive. So uh, I can really recommend, if you want to dive into outdoor photography, to study that book. And even though I've only read maybe 100 pages, I can already now say that even though he talks a lot about shooting with film and maybe some gear that is a bit dated today, I think many of the things he talks about are evergreens. They are relevant now. They will be relevant in 50 years. And another thing I like about him is that you can tell that his old man was a philosopher. So he's not afraid of, you know, zooming out, taking the bigger picture. And he's not afraid of complexity. And he's certainly well read. Uh, yeah, so an impressive guy in many ways, as I see it. Of course, his images are impressive, but I really like what he writes and what he shares. Um, so thank you for that book. And I will, in a later video, come back to, to that book. But I would say, just having read the first 100 pages, if you live in the United States especially, and could go down to a bookstore and buy a used copy for $2, I think, yeah, that's just crazy. Uh, so uh, I would highly recommend that you do that and read a few pages in the book. It's not an easy read, especially part one, uh, where he talks about uh, the mind's eye and other complicated uh, concepts. But I would still say that the more you read the rest of the book, where he uses what he introduces in part one, the more sense part one starts to make. 
but part one is not an easy night read. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm rambling on here. The bottom line is part one is not an easy read. So if you're struggling a little bit with some of the same issues as I am to figure out why is it actually I'm shooting these images, do I just walk around at random and shoot left, right and center? Or is there some structure to it? Try to go through your portfolio and see if there is something that if there's a, a common theme that you can find, there's probably several, that's what I see in my work. Uh, but just pick out one and then try to to sort of bundle all those images that are around the same theme. I've done just that and uh, let me show you some images. It's not because these images are important or good. The point is that they are around the same theme, the same mood about feeling small. I'm not sure you can put yourself in the shoes of a seagull, but if you could, I think you would feel relatively small here, being the little bird flying towards the settings on here with the dramatic cloud set. And even though your friends are around, you may be very aware that when you look at the bigger picture, you're only a small part of it. And here a little helpless leaf drifting downstream. Not really much you can do about it other than tag along. When the forces of nature unfold, then I really feel small here. The storm Malik that hit Denmark last year, and only because I was able to hide behind a house could I take this image, otherwise there was no chance of me holding on to my camera. Here I had parked my car alongside the road and walked into the woods, and all of a sudden the setting sun caught me by surprise and I was in the dark woods. And here you can see the tall trees and the darkness. I was really not comfortable with this situation, and I can assure you I was happy when I found my car again. Another example of the forces of nature, although much more quiet. Here morning mists where the traffic the morning traffic was heavily affected the day I shot these images. And again, just a reminder how fragile things can be. So once again, thank you for recommending Galen's book, The Inner Game of Outdoor Photography. And I would say if you live in the United States where you can go down and buy that book for $2 in a used copy, uh, yeah, it's very, very easy for me to recommend that. It is uh, a very good book with a lot of good stuff in it. So uh, I wouldn't think for a second i would just go and buy that book and the other thing was today was uh, a little reflection on why we shoot and the sort of the state of mind we are in when you shoot certain subjects and certain scenes and whether that translate well back to lightroom so to speak or when you print it and put it on the wall yeah that was me rambling once again i will come back with other themes but for now as always happy shooting take care bye bye